All right, well, welcome back to another episode of The Grace Between Us, and I believe this is episode number eight. Number eight. I am Nathan Hurst. I'm Lori. And we are here to discuss, have discussions about things that many times are hard to discuss as far as our Christian faith and our Christian life and things that maybe the church doesn't even want to talk about Mm -hmm. or won't take time to talk about. So today we're going to talk about something that's difficult, something we all use every single day. Every day. It's something that we all talk about. It's something that we all figure out ways to get more of, and if you haven't figured it out, we're going to talk about the church and money. And money, and, uh, money is is a it's a hard subject. You know? It is. Um, it's a subject, even you know, one of the biggest causes of arguments in couples' lives and families. Absolutely, it's one of the biggest things that we fight about from time to mm-hmm. time. Uh, you know, where those dollars and cents are spent, yeah. and what do we do with the money that we have? What do we do with the extra money that we have? What do we right. do with the limited amount of funds that right. we have? Where does that go? And we're not going to be able to touch everything no. in this setting. So this will be part of a series, and I'm not saying we're going to do like series one, two, and three, but it'll definitely be part of an ongoing series where we talk about money. We're probably not going to get to the the details of tithing and what it to be a tither. We're probably not going to get to all the nuanced ideas of how scripture relates to money or how Jesus related to money, but we're going to cover some highlights today that hopefully will help people have a different perspective and even a biblical perspective of money. Yeah. I mean, most people don't have, I feel don't have a good perspective of money. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that either, you know, they worship money to a degree or they think that they can never have any money. Yes. There's like two polar extremes, yeah. <laughs> right? We have the one folks that are doing everything they can to get more money and the other folks that think, well, I heard somewhere someone say that, you know, money's bad. Right. And if money's bad, I don't want any of it right. or, or I shouldn't have too much of it because it'll make me bad. Right. And then they have a, maybe a different view of money than maybe even their spouse. Yeah. If you want to be humble, you have to be poor. I've heard that a lot, <laughs> right? We've heard that, especially yeah. as pastors, people think all the time to keep the pastor humble yeah. is to keep them poor. poor. And that's definitely not what God intended for not just our family, but even for your family, right. regardless of the situation or context that you're in. So uh, we have to kind of find a biblical concept for money and and really what money is really about. And it kind of brings us to the first idea, is money evil? Yeah. I mean, is money evil? Is money actually the problem? Yeah. Those, those dollar bills wadded up in your wallet, are they the problem? Well, 1 Timothy 6.10 says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, mm-hmm. which while some coveted after, they have erred on the from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's and that's a big scripture, right? So mm-hmm. here's a teaching to the church. Modern day church like us, we can we can adopt this into our everyday life that the love of money ha- is the root of all evil. It is right. one of those those fundamental things of humanity that the need to get more and more stuff, more and more substance brings about evil in our lives. And you know, I you got to read this scripture for what it's worth, right? It's not saying that money in itself is the problem. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not. It's not saying that, the again, the wadded up $1 bills in your pocket are the right. problem. They're not bombs waiting to go off. Yeah, I love that, that mm. um, comment that you always say, that money is a tool. That's right. It's so important because so many times we think of money as so much more than that. Yeah. And we let it or think that it can control us controls us. That's right. And you know, there's many people that look at money uh, because they either have had or they haven't had, Mm -hmm. and they look at money with kind of a a tinge uh, to it, that it's, it means something for some folks, it's status. It means that you finally arrived. Yeah. That's where your value is at. Yes. You finally made it. Mm -hmm. And for others, like we said, money is, it could only be gotten by ill gain. Right. Right. (laughs) The only way that someone could have gotten any money at all is because they cheated someone, they swindled someone, they did something that, that was, you know, uh, uh, not a very good nature to get the, those funds. And we know that's not true either. There's all kinds of wonderful people who are very, very, right. very rich, and they're very honest mm-hmm. in getting that money. So, you know, we we have to kind of come to terms with ourselves that money's not the problem. Right Now, if you have a love for money, an insatiable thirst just for money, where you will railroad, you will go over mm-hmm. anyone to get it. Right. You will knock down your grandma to pick a quarter up off the ground. <laughs> That, that's a love for money right. that the Bible actually speaks against. Yeah. But there's a difference between a love for money and actually having a pro- proper perspective of money. Right. Money is an amazing tool to use mm-hmm. for the kingdom of God. That's and right. so many times we look at it as evil and then we don't think that we could even do the things for God that we want to do for God. That's right. You know, I, I've always thought about it this way that if money is bad, 
Mm-hmm. If money itself is so evil, then why do we go to work and work so hard Every for it? Every day. Right? Why do we trade our time, essentially trading our being? Mm-hmm. The essence of who we are many times is time. It's it's you, you can't get back those those ticks off a clock. Right. Once they're gone, they're gone. And we spend it so often, dollars for hours. Mm-hmm. And if that if if the case were that money were bad, we would never spend those dollars for hours. We would keep our hours because the trade off wouldn't be good. We'd just be homeless, right? Yeah. Well, eventually you would be, <laughs> and that brings me to the other point, right? It's if money is all bad, then why do we give it to people who are in need? Yeah. Why do we ask for so much money to give in aid to folks who don't have any money? Right. I mean, the Bible speaks clearly to that, that mm-hmm. money does answer all things. That's right. And, you know, people don't like to hear that. They're like, oh, you know, you can't talk like that. Well, yeah. money answers a lot of issues. In fact, in many ways, in cases, it can answer almost any question we have. Right. Right. So there's the, the two sides of the coin when it comes to money. If you're, if you're in love with money, mm-hmm. it is literally the root of all evil. Right. You will eventually find yourself doing anything you can for those dollars, for those cents. You, that you is will, where you find your worth. That's where you find your value. And it's all a values assessment mm-hmm. like Lori's talking about. It's it's the idea, the old idea of worthship. You know, we get the word worship from worthship. This thing has value. It has that's worthiness. Good. And so eventually we start to worship money. Right when we value it too high. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, the Bible also says that money can answer almost any problem, right? right? If you're sick, if you're super sick, money can answer most of those problems. You can Mm -hmm. get the right doctors, right diagnoses. Now, the fact of the matter is though, you could be as rich as Steve Jobs and not find the actual cure for your problem. So it doesn't transcend every issue, but it might get you any answer, right? Mm -hmm. So there might be issues that it can't transcend. It can't help you get healthy, ultimately, but it can give you answers to health problems. Right. So we have to look at money for what it is. Mm -hmm. The tool that God has ordained at this time for us to use, Mm -hmm. because if we were at a different time, we would be sheep or maybe cattle or different other ways of of exchange. But right now it's dollars and cents. It's it's money. Right. Maybe Bitcoin someday. (laughs) Maybe it'll be galactic credits. Sounds so crazy, but it's true. We (laughs) just have to gain perspective. That's right. You know, and when we have the wrong perspective of money, it's going to lead us the wrong way. But when we understand what it is and that's a tool and that doesn't own you, then we can understand yeah. what it is and move forward from that and use it for great things. Well, and that's a big thing for me. Like what she said, it doesn't own you. Mm-hmm. If money owns you, man, you're, you're in a world of hurt because right. money doesn't care about you. <laughs> money will starve you. Yeah. Money will leave you without a shelter. Right. Money will leave you, like I said, homeless. Money doesn't care about your feelings. Nope. It has no it has no affinity towards you whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Yet so many of us have an affinity towards money. Right. <laughs> Something that will never love us back. No. You know, the funny thing is with money, with actual cash money, if you eat it, you're going to get sick yeah. and it'll kill you. Mm-hmm. If you try to use it as a blanket, it's not a very good blanket. Yet you can exchange those dollars for nourishing food. Yeah. You can exchange those dollars for warm blankets. Mm-hmm. So it is just that transactionary tool. It really is a facade. Mm-hmm. Those numbers on those dollar bills are facades. In fact, we realize that in other cultures and other countries where their exchange rate isn't what ours is. And that, you know, to every dollar, there's 10,000 of their dollars. <laughs> and then we find out, man, the money really isn't, that the cash value of the money really isn't what we thought it was. Yeah. It's really just kind of a facade that we're learning how to use, that we're learning actually, we're learning, we're learning how to get a proper perspective and, and really what God's called us to do with the money, with the resources that we have. Right. You know, the next thing that I think we can point out is, is the idea of where does true wealth come from? Mm-hmm. You know, Deuteronomy 8.18 says, you may say in your heart, the power and the strength of my hand has made this wealth for me. But remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. That's a huge, that's one of my favorite scriptures when it talks about money. Because the the writer there is literally saying, listen, you really think you're doing something with your own hands? (laughs) You think you're doing something under your own power? Let me set you straight. Remember you. the Lord your God who gives you the power to gain wealth. So there's right. that big word wealth, that there, wealth, money, mm-hmm. prosperity. Oh, good Lord, get in the prosperity gospel stuff. Don't say oh, that word. watch out. <laughs> Listen, if the gospel wasn't prosperous, Jesus would have left you to die in your own sin and you would it's eventually suffer. Oh my gosh. You, you would <laughs> suffer the consequences of your sin. But because the Bible is a prosperous message and the gospel's prosperous, mm-hmm. sorry, it is the prosperity gospel by nature, Jesus took away your sin and he 
prospers you. He remakes you and then prospers you. Even if you thought about it just on a spiritual level, right. he's a prosperous God, but we don't go further than that. But here he says, it's the, don't, uh, don't forget the Lord your God who gives you the power to gain wealth. But why does he give us that power? You know, In order to establish that covenant. Yeah that covenant. And it's, it's important to gain perspective on that level too. You know, so many times we think that we earn it, that it's all about mm -hmm. our doing and that we made this happen. So you deserve it. And we can do whatever we want with that money. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, we get attitude and you're like, I, this is my I money. Earned this you money. got your she money. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> money she don't know about. Mm, no. I wish I had some she money. She knows about every dime. Trust me. Every dollar that I ever get, she knows. Gift cards. I don't care. She's got them somewhere. Well. <laughs> it's the truth. That's how, our, that's how our family works. But the fact is, you know, we're called to establish a covenant. We're called to use money in a proper context and perspective so that we can establish God's covenant. You know, I think we sometimes as Christians and American Christians who are already blessed beyond measure, let's be right. honest, right? If you have more than one pair of shoes, you're a part of the world's 1% right. or whatever it is. It's a high percentage, maybe mm -hmm. 10%, 10 or 1%. I don't forgot the stat, but whatever it is, it's super high, right? So if you have more than one pair of shoes, you're a part of the world's elite. Mm -hmm. Think it's hard about to that think for about a second. Because we don't think that we are. You know, no, in America, we don't. We complain constantly about the things we don't have. That's right. You know, the. That phrase, first world problem. That's you right. Know, we don't. That's right. We don't really have problems. And we are the most prosperous nation. Yeah. We are the most prosperous nation probably ever in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're having a well, depending on how you look at it, an economic boom. More people are working now than every ever from every demographic. So, what does that tell us? That tells us that God, whether you like how it happened or not, or what mechanism that drew this this country together, or not God has blessed the country that is the United States. You can't take God's hand off of it. We're not just lucky, apart from God's plan. However, why is He giving us? this blessing? Why is he creating wealth in this nation? And yeah. maybe your na nation isn't as prosperous. I would say, man, seek God's face and hopefully that nation can turn itself around and maybe it can even excel the prosperity of the United States because we might not be at the top of the hill forever. We haven't always been. Right. Hope we are, but you know what? Who knows if we don't go down God's path, then maybe, maybe that won't be our plight forever. But the fact is that that covenant that he's cutting that's the important part. Establishing his promise here on earth. That's why money's important. Money's not important for anything else. Yeah. We have, you know, God wants us to be prosperous in our physical life as mm -hmm. well as our spiritual life. And a lot of times we don't want to think that way, or maybe things don't look the way that we expect them to look. That's right. And so we, you know, act like that's not a you know, possibility. Mm -hmm. And so we throw that out, throw the baby out with the bathwater, not yeah. thinking that we can even have, you know, wealth or prosperity in our life. Yep. And then we start making it, you know, comparing it and thinking about it in the terms of being a Christian. And well, yes. I'm just humble. I'm just, I'm just, a, it's the false humility. Right? Yeah. I'm going to be a humble Christian who doesn't have much, who doesn't excel, who doesn't own anything of value, who doesn't have any big goals. I'm just going to live this meager life that God's, you know, put me on this earth to live. And, and the fact of the matter is, again, if, especially if you live in the United States, that's an untruth from, from statement one. You live in the most prosperous country in the world. This is it. It doesn't get any better. So guess what? We've already come to a place where God has empowered us and he can empower you even further. Even if you're having a hard time to make it end meet, ends meet, he can empower you further to get wealth. He says it. He promised he would. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Yeah, God wants you to be blessed. Mm -hmm. He wants to bless you. You know, and there's aspects that we need to believe for that to happen that's too. Right. You know, a lot of times we have a mindset that it can never happen. And so yes. that's where our faith is at. Or that it can happen for someone else, but not mm. for us. You can look at a Warren Buffett and say, well, that's Warren Buffett. Totally or you guilty. can look at, I know, right? <laughs> or you can look at a Steve Jobs, that's a Steve yeah. Jobs or whoever, or whoever, or Mark Zuckerberg. And, you know, we don't get it in our heart that God intends for everyone to be prosperous. Now that's different for everyone. Sure. Not everyone wants to be a billionaire. Nope. Let's be honest. There's a lot of baggage that comes with being a billionaire. Not everyone wants to be on the front of Forbes magazine. Some people do. Sure. Some people just want enough comfortability to live their life without worry. Yeah. And that's a sense of prosperity. Some people just want their bodies to be healthy so that they can live life and they don't have to be pulled down by some disease. And that's a sense of prosperity. Yeah. And some want, you know, to be prosperous to give back that's to right. others. You know, that's, that's right. fantastic. You know, it's 
That's a big deal. Thing. Well, and that's how we establish God's covenant, right. covenant is actually through giving of our resources. Right. right? God intends that we get these resources, but not just for ourselves. No. That we start to establish that covenant first in our own lives and then the world around mm-hmm. us. And it actually does start to literally shape the world around us, even, well, I'd say even to the extent that we're seeing a transition that literally, in 2014, the stat was done, literally $50 billion a year was given to churches or Christian it's organizations. Fantastic. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's so awesome. I, I guess, man, maybe more people should think about being pastors because there's <laughs> some money out there. <laughs> I wish it was all at our church, but it isn't. And I'd like to say I'd do better with it than every other organization, but the fact is that's not true. Yeah. I know God's called everyone to do what they're called to do. But mm-hmm. the cool part about this stat was millennials give it an 84%. So 84% of millennials are actually regular givers to charities. Isn't that great? That's awesome. Back in 2014, yeah. Yeah, back in 2014. So it could have increased uh, mm-hmm. since then. Baby boomers were only at 72%. Mm. So they're actually less. It's but so interesting. But baby boomers actually give more yeah. in in total. Yeah. So throughout the year, there might be less baby boomers giving, but they actually give more as a percentage. Mm-hmm. And now millennials are on their way up. And I actually think as they as they increase, right. as they as they increase in substance and in wealth, and they pay down those student debts because those are huge for huge. most millennials. You know, I think they'll actually give more money. So if we have a proper perspective of money, if we understand that money isn't evil, Mm -hmm. that God has an intent for money to establish his covenant, he has an intent for wealth to establish his covenant first in our lives, then amongst the the world around us that we can affect with the finances that God's given us, then I think he calls us to do what we've seen here, this $50 billion marker to increase that. Wouldn't it be awesome if one year what was given to churches and Christian organizations topped a trillion dollars? That would be a... Amazing. Right? It would be amazing. Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome if one year one year that tops two trillion and three trillion and the wealth of the nation increases and the people's needs are met and it goes on and on and on and on and on and we learn that the cycle happens that once we invest yeah. our resources, mm-hmm. right, in establishing God's kingdom, mm-hmm. there's a cycle that happens. Yep. And if we're honest or with ourselves, we have to first go back to the first marker. How do we view money? Yeah. You know, when we view money in a negative light, it's we're not going to see the benefits of it. That's right. And it's going to be hard to to call on ourselves to actually be ones responsible for developing wealth. Mm. It's going to be hard to live that Deuteronomy 8.18. Uh, remember that it's the Lord your God who gives you the power to gain wealth. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard to remember that fact that God gives us the ability to gain wealth, whatever wealth that, whatever that means to you, whatever mm-hmm. context, again, billion dollars, hundred million dollars, billion dollars, hundred thousand a year, whatever, whatever that context is for you, right. that you come to a place where you're able to make wealth, establish wealth in order to establish his kingdom. That's a huge, huge idea. I think in scripture that we forget, that we forget that God's called us literally calling a pulling in our heart. You need to make some money. You need to go out and do something with your life. You need to go out and invest capital, time, energy, effort, and reap those rewards so that the kingdom of God can be enhanced. Yeah. You know what excites me about those stats is, you know, seeing, you know, the millennials are giving, seeing the baby boomers are giving is the fact that when you give God, he promises that it will come back to you. And so because of that, and this probably goes into another day too, because we can't get into all of it. We're not going to get into all of it. But what's so amazing about that is look at how much they're giving and how much is going to come back to them to give more. Isn't that exciting? That's right. And God promises, obviously. There's there's promises attached to yes. giving, and again, we don't have time to go into no. all that. You might not like the idea of the tithe, or the promise of the tithe, or the or the promise of first fruits, or the the promise of giving alms, or whatever. Uh, we can talk about that some other time. We can get into the, to the weeds on that. Mm. But we know through Scripture that God does promise to enhance our lives when we give. In yeah. fact, we see it in the lives of like billionaires and rich mm-hmm. people. Like one of the key factors, if you've ever studied out rich people, is they give. Absolutely, they're givers. Yes. It's funny that their lives, even from a secular standpoint, has to line up with the word of God. Mm. Give. Yep. I'll be giving back to you. Oh, that's another another night. But (laughs) we have to understand that 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 is, like Lori's saying, that's key. Fifty billion dollars seed sown. Yeah. Fifty billion dollars given into the work of God's kingdom so that it can then be repaid. Well, yeah, and it's twofold. It's, you know, God said he would bless us back Mm. financially if we give, but also, you know, this is going into the kingdom of God to see souls saved. That's right. You know, we, this ultimately is eternal, that's the goal. 
This yeah. is eternal. Yeah. You are giving so that people can meet Jesus. That's right. And that's huge. Well, and, and for us, we have, we've written up this kind of family, uh, what do you, what do you call it? Uh, a speech thing. What do you, what do you yeah. call it? A declaration? Yeah, declaration. Yeah. We've written up this family declaration. And part of it is any funds that come into our house are not ours first, right. but must be used at the discretion of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And sometimes we're really good at that. And sometimes we're not so good at that. Sometimes money comes in and we already have it earmarked for what we want to burn it on. And other times we're super sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Okay, God, what would you have us do with this? Is this ours or is this for the kingdom? And so we're doing our best, uh, we believe, to actually follow that rule as much as we possibly can. And God speaks sometimes super loudly. You need to give that. (laughs) Like I remember one time uh, we had had a watch we had bought you and God leaned on her heart. You need to give this away. And it was a it was a weird moment for me because I'm like we hadn't been married that long, we'd been married like two years, and <laughs> we know we spent all this money on this watch. And she's like, I really feel like God told me to give this to this person. And I'm looking at her like, this is ridiculous. Why would we give this away? Like, let's just we we paid for it. Let's just keep it. Come on, <laughs> we can you can use it for many years afterwards. And the fact is, God knew what He was doing. He put it in the life of somebody who needed it for mm-hmm. for actually a reason. And no, no need to go into the whole story, but you know there was a lot behind that, and it was blessing to somebody, mm-hmm. and it blessed our lives as well. Right. And we were, we had the means to be able to do that, which I think for a lot of folks, we think, well, what could I give? If I have a different perspective on money and God's really calling me to establish the kingdom. And part of that is investing. What do I have to give? Oh, what do you have around your house? We have so much to give. That's right. Yeah, we do. And sometimes we don't even think that some of the things that we have are worth value or someone would want it, but Mm -hmm. God knows. And he'll put those things on your heart and what you should do with that. Listen, this girl's given away watches and purses and stuff. I mean, expensive, <laughs> trust me, expensive purses because I bought them and now they're no longer in our possession. <laughs> but it's awesome because we're able to do things out of the abundance of our stuff, mm-hmm. of our heart, of our finances, and we're able to give into the lives of other people. You, you know, know, and God always blesses you. Oh you know? my gosh, When yes. you give, it's amazing to see what God does. And you don't do it for that purpose. You no, know? no. But it's amazing. We don't to, give to get. That's no, not the point of giving. not at all. But it's amazing to see, you know, God, it's mm-hmm. like he looks down and he's like, hey, I got you. That's my kid, That's right? My kid. And we do that with our sons, mm-hmm. right? When when we watch them in their little hearts get benevolent and they give something of their toys right. or their stuff away, it's funny because the next thing I want to do is like go get them something he nice. Totally does. Oh my gosh! I'm like, no, let's relish in this moment. <laughs> oh no, the, I, for me it's like, okay, you just got you just bought yourself an upgraded toy because you <laughs> gave away and you were selfless, and I love that, and I want to encourage that in them. In fact, we had uh, some folks over not too long ago, and Nash was trying to give stuff away as they're leaving I'm thinking kid you know cool but it ain't the proper time or place for that and they weren't really asking for it their parents didn't want our junk so it was <laughs> time to sl- settle that down a little bit but it was just out of his little heart of compassion yeah and I hope he never ever yeah. loses that because that's really what we want to see in regards to money yeah right everything in our house everything in our life has dollar signs on yeah. it yeah whether you buy gas, whether you buy food whether you buy trinkets for your house and knickknacks it all has dollar signs on it yeah but ultimately, those dollar signs don't mean much. No. They're a facade. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the kingdom of God, you have, you you serve the God who literally owns the cattle on a thousand yeah, more hills. More than enough. There's nothing in this life that isn't His. Right. So what are we worried about? Yeah. When it comes to money, what are we really worried about? Are we worried we can't pay our bills? Come on, he's going to come through. Yep. Are you really worried that he's not going to run you through the best situation in life that he could bring you in front of, give you the best opportunities? Come on, you know he wants to unlock that door for you. We could tell you testimony after testimony oh of how God has brought us through some of the, oh, I mean, bleak situations. Oh, it yes. looks terrible. And, you know, it's so funny because when you move forward and there's always something that you're moving through in life. And mm-hmm. I always re- go back to those moments and mm-hmm. think about, you know, Look what God did. That's He's right. going to do it again. He's not going to fail me. He never no, has. He never and it's has. amazing to see what God does and, well, and how it just increases your faith. And we, we're going a little long we're on this one. Too long. We could ramble for this on this for a while, <laughs> but I want to I want to kind of bring this point out, you know, one of the pastors that we that we studied and served under used to say that you can't believe God for a seven-layered wedding cake when you haven't believed God for a donut. Mm. And for some so folks right now, you got to believe God for 50 bucks. Yeah. You have a $500,000 need, but you've never believed God for 50 bucks because mm. your mentality on money, your mindset on money isn't where it needs to be. 
Right. And so you've got to learn to retrain your mind so that you can actually harness the faith. You can, you can harness the new way of thinking so that you can believe God to supply that just $50 marker. Yeah. You need a $500,000 marker, but you know you got to start at that 50, mm-hmm. right? And for us, we've been there, man. We've been those places where the bills that we have now and the things that we're trying to accomplish now and God and the dreams that he's put on our heart now, man, they are so much bigger than the amount of money that we had to believe for. In fact, what we believe for for our church just to survive is so much more money a week than it was a month when we first started. (laughs) Our budget for an entire month wasn't even close. And if we didn't make our budget, it didn't matter because there really wasn't anyone on on staff or on payroll. (laughs) And now we're, you know, making payroll and everything else. And it's a funny thing to watch God as we grow and develop and stretch ourselves in faith and stretch a different perspective of money that it changes our life. Yes. If Amen. you really want to change your perspective on money, I'll, I'll, well, we need to end this, but I'll end it with <laughs> this, uh, that you need to start a business. Start a business. Start something. And I don't care if it's a side business. You know, you have your day job. I'm not saying quit your day job. You got to do what God's called you to do, where he's called you to do it for the time he's called you to. But start something of an entrepreneurial, of an entrepreneurial endeavor because it will change your perspective on money like that. It's one of the fastest <laughs> tools in the world that God uses to get us our heads out of the rut. Because what happens? Now you're responsible for something. Yeah, it's terrifying. Oh, it is sometimes. <laughs> but it also brings you to that edge of faith where you're like, man, I am literally stepping out on the impossible. Right. And if God doesn't come through, this whole ship's going down. And the funny thing is, well, the amazing thing, the miraculous thing, he comes through every time. Yes, he does. Oh my gosh. And the thing is, I will say that some of you that struggle, many times it has a lot to do with our obedience. And I can say this for us. Yeah. When we're obedient, man, the Bible literally says if you're obedient, you'll eat the fruit, you'll, you'll eat the fat of land. You, you'll eat the good stuff of the land. When we're obedient, we seem to be in that space where it's like nothing can go wrong. Man, the moment we're not obedient, we're disobedient, mm, that, ship tar- that ship starts to take a turn towards rougher waters. Yeah. I will say this. Obedience is the key in right. understanding money and how we perceive money. Mm-hmm. We probably got to end this one yeah. today. We're going way <laughs> too long. Uh, but yeah, sign off for us. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for enjoying with us, the grace between us. We really hope you did enjoy it. And please put your comments below and subscribe and find us on all of the socials, Instagram, Facebook. Um, what other ones? Twitter. Twitter YouTube. So, YouTube. Yep. Anchor. At, anchor. The grace between us. At the grace between us. Anchor is anchor.fm slash uh, the grace between us. And you can find us also a podcast, yeah. even on, uh, iTunes, the grace I, between yeah. us. So you can find the podcast there as well. Uh, and yeah, so I was gonna let you sign off. Oh, <laughs> have a great.